Daily solutions, it's a day to day to day daily solution. Daily solutions, it's a day to day to day daily solution. Daily solutions, it's a day to day to day daily solution. Daily solutions, it's a day to day to day daily solution. Daily solutions, it's a day to day to day daily solution. Daily solutions, it's a day to day to day daily solution. Crash. All right, hey, welcome everybody. I my 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 person. Let me introduce myself uh-huh. over here on the microphone. <laughs> Graham is who I am. He's Graham. Yeah, <laughs> that was Jake. Oh yeah, that's that's me. I'm Jake. Yeah. Old Jakey Snakesters over there. Or Looney Jake Tooney. And we're gonna be answering some of your construction questions, which uh, of which today's is: What should I build into my float center at the beginning? To make my life easier once I'm up and running. That is... That almost rhymed. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I mean, clearly somebody who spent Excellent time in a question. float center. Um, Just like all of, the, all of the questions we get are amazing. Oh, they're all great. These are you know, high quality. I love them. I love them all. Um, yeah, things to make it easier for your staff, right? Because eventually you'll have the capacity where your tanks are full and people are working and they're humming. And how do you, how do you streamline that? Um, we have personally figured out a lot of streamlining uh, out of necessity float on is only 1612 square feet we run six tanks we're open 24 hours a day things need to run smoothly and <laughs> and we're always willing to break systems for a new system that will be better um so some of the things we like uh, sort of like breaking your own arm so you can put on that robotic arm that you've always been yeah having. right clearly better clearly better <laughs> um I like a dishwasher. I think it's one of the big ones that like I really like uh, for a couple reasons. One, you need to think about it like when you first design your floor plans because you need drainage, you need power for it, and everything like that. Um, two, I think that it removes some strife in the life of your employees. Also, kind of um, rhymey. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, good. it's one of these days, I guess. Um, no, I mean if you walk into a float center, like yeah, who, you're who often would settle for anything less. <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry, go on. <laughs> So you've walked into the best of the float centers. Um, now you've walked into a float center and you're typically going to see tea or kombucha or something like that. Um, and you don't want to just use plastic cups because that's kind of wasteful and bad for the environment. Uh, so you have all these mugs or all these cups sitting around. Um, and it's just like having roommates when you're working with your fellow employees. Like it kind of gets into that situation where like, oh, I did the dishes last or, oh, I did the dishes last. And we actually experienced this at Float On. And then one day we're like, we can't deal with this anymore, nor do we want to trust people to clean cups to get lipstick off of them or keep sponges around or do any of the stuff that we've been doing. Let's just get a dishwasher. And it has been an amazing thing for our staff, for timing and for, um, I don't want to say the sanitation of our cups because they are always clean. But I know they're clean for the now. the peace of mind yeah, that comes with mind. knowing that you're blasting things with high temperature water, and, and you're no longer paying your staff to yeah. wash dishes. That's not the best use of their time. No, so no. yeah, I like it. A dishwasher. We have a really tiny one too. We do, just like a, a mini, just enough for the mugs. Top. Yeah, you can almost picture it inside a tiny home. <laughs> like it's very <laughs> compact. Uh, yeah, and and often requires plumbing in from the beginning. Uh, you know, or you can add connections yeah. in and stuff like that. You could it's theoretically a, yeah. just use splitters from like your your washer lines and you could drain into your utility sink and sure, yeah. stuff like that. But it's much better from day one if you plan it out. A little nicer. Uh, I guess just in, you know, and this is stuff we've talked about before, but just to kind of toss it back out there, big utility sink oh, I love is great to have in there. Three bays with, with the drain platforms boards. on the side. Yeah, drain, yeah, drain boards, boards is what is they're, they're called, called, apparently. Stainless steel if you can. <laughs> um, the uh, the same stainless steel ones are like twice the price. So, you know, you're looking at jump from like $400 to like $900, but mm-hmm. definitely worth it over yeah, the long haul. Yeah, love it. Uh, mop sink. Yep. Same thing. It's really Absolutely. nice uh, if you have the space for... Especially if you have cartridge filters on site, right? Because those need to be demineralized. Those need to be sitting in hydrochloric and sulfuric acid. Um, and that's an, you know a five-gallon bucket. Well, at you know eight and a half pounds for each gallon of water, you can see how that gets heavy very quickly. Yeah, and now um, you're picking up an acid solution yes, and trying like, to like, dump it into something All kinds of crazy tight. things. Yeah, any, yeah. Anytime you would have picked up something to put it in the utility right. sink, they could hurt their having a mop sink instead is so yeah. much nicer. So, And we're always writing our people about wearing their PPE, their personal protective equipment, but still you can't be there every hour of the day. PPE? Is that yeah. what you're calling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what people call it? That's what kids on the street call it, baby. All right. Well, yeah. Good enough for me then. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it's just good things to have around. Oh, like an eyewash station involved too, because if they're dealing with that acid, worst case scenario, if they do get like a little splash in their peepers, you want there to be something to wash that away. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. And that's uh, anything that's that's safety oriented too, I think is just so important to actually give your, your staff access to mm-hmm. from the very beginning and yourself when you're still working the center. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hose bibs or spigots inside yeah. of all the rooms. Or so cocks, was... depending on where you're at. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that, was all, that was something that we really immediately regretted not having in the rooms after we'd built yeah. out. Uh, it's so nice to be able to just hook up a hose directly inside your room. With, and... with temperature control as well. So you're not just putting, you know, cold water into your float tanks. Like you can actually get, you know, temperature controls on there. Yeah, as filling well. up the float tank, spraying down the room with a little more pressure. Mm-hmm. Like there's, yeah, having just the ability to have a hose in any room and preferably with a little quick release yep, absolutely. Uh, mechanism. So you can just like with snap a, it down with the vacuum breaker on there, making I know, sure yeah, again, if this you is... do fill your tanks, you don't pull any of that back into the potable water supply. We've, uh, we've definitely mentioned some of these things before, but it's only because they are so nice to have. I really don't mind doubling down on them. Definitely. Oh, yeah. I, you, yeah, I, it, my ideal center would 100% come with uh, spigot in, in every single room. Some other things we like to see. You know, I guess this is more just like housekeeping, but I like to see like a little area, maybe some cubbies or some coat hooks or something like that for your staff to put their stuff. Um, Mm, You know, so often you walk into a float center and like people's personal items are just sitting on the back counter. And, you know, I mean, it's not a big thing. It's certainly not safety, but it does look a little cluttered. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's just something that I think is nice if you have the square footage for it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And... I mean, I guess like on the on the extreme side, which we don't have, and I've only really seen in in one place. I always think of these. Uh, uh, it's like a step above the the hose bib, which is like a giant coiled, sp- crazy spray hose oh, yeah. that you can pull down, like right. at uh, Andy Larson's uh, <laughs> Float Milwaukee, which is just amazing. So, I mean, you can go to some great lengths to just be able to pressure wash essentially the inside of your float rooms and build that in from the very beginning, which is super cool. So. Uh, again, a little bit rewind to my last one, but like a more extreme, <laughs> extreme level of it. Some other things. Some other things to make our employees' lives better. Um, we have one-way egress locks uh, after about, uh, what is it, midnight? Um, so we're open 24 hours, as you guys may or may not know, um, which means that we're open during bar close. Um, we are open uh, late into the night and between the hours of like 3, 4, 5 a.m., uh, some of our staff are in back rooms doing some deep cleaning and stuff like that, doing some water chemistry um, while clients are floating in other rooms. Um, and we just didn't want people coming into our lobby, um, you know, unannounced or anything like that for a couple of reasons, you know, safety and a whole range of reasons. You can imagine why we would want that. <laughs> Um, what are some other things we like to do to make our staff's lives better, easier, more efficient in the float center? On the less technical side, building in storage and just some places oh. to put a lot of the things that you change out room to room every yeah. single transition to Absolutely. make sure that it's um, you know easily accessible, whether that's little storage closets in between the rooms or... I've even seen some people that just have a little, uh, you know, if the, the rooms are big enough with the float tanks, um, a little area in the room, they keep a lot of the backup mm-hmm, supplies for that. Back yeah, there. exactly. Yeah. So that they can just, if they forgot something in their, their back work room, grab it really quick from there to, to restock it. So, yeah, clever things like that. Just making sure that the, the storage locations you're choosing are, are easily accessible and make sense with the for flow sure. of your, your space, I think is good. Yeah, I think that's great. Definitely. Cool. Yeah, I think those those are some really good tips. There's probably more out there, but that's at least a lot. That's a, a, a lot of the bulk of the things <laughs> that that really do. Like if if you start without those, you really notice them. Maybe except the eyewash station, which you might not notice until something goes horribly wrong. But uh, yeah, when <laughs> when something does, you'll be very glad that it's there. Um, yeah, and if you have questions of your own, head on over to floattanksolutions.com slash podcast slash. Jake and Graham are awesome, and we will answer your questions. (laughs) All right. Have a great day, guys. Thank you. Bye.